Joining us now, a member of the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack, Congressman Adam Schiff. The California Democrat is also chairman of the House Intel Committee. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. What do you want to ask, Eastman? Well, we'd like to know, I think, about any efforts to overturn the election, uh, as well as what expectation there was uh, that this mob that was being assembled uh, down the mall would be used to try to uh, either intimidate Congress, try to stop Mike Pence from certifying the results. Uh, and, uh, you know, Mr. Eastman in his public remarks has been all over the map in terms of whether he stands by that memo, doesn't stand by that memo. Uh, but he clearly, I think, has information relevant to the committee's inquiry uh, into any efforts to overturn the election. So I think he's a very pertinent witness. We've reported at least five former Trump White House staffers have been voluntarily talking with the select committee. First, can you tell us who you've been talking to? I can't tell you who, but I can tell you that we're conducting interviews and depositions almost every day. Uh, so while the public fights uh, have been very much uh, the center of attention uh, in terms of our efforts to get Steve Bannon or Meadows or these other people, um, the reality is that a great many people are cooperating with us. We're making, I think, very swift progress. Uh, we're getting documents uh, and relevant information so we're proceeding with great expedition, and to those who don't cooperate, uh, we're moving quickly as we did with Steve Bannon to hold them in criminal contempt. So when we say at least five former Trump staffers, are we, are, is it five or is it more than five then that, that you've been talking to voluntarily? Uh, you know, I, I don't want to comment on, on the number uh, or the, the type of position, uh, but I can tell you that uh, there is a great deal of work that's going on outside the public view. Now, we will be having more public hearings, and we've been discussing which of those to do next uh, so that the public can see very demonstrably uh, what we're working on. Uh, but we are gathering a lot of information from cooperating witnesses. We will be anxiously awaiting uh, details about the next public hearing. Meantime, Trump has been trying to keep your committee from conducting these interviews. He's also sued now to keep the committee from getting documents from the National Archive claiming executive privilege. We're reporting today that your committee, the Select Committee, has temporarily backed off a request for dozens of records from the Trump White House, even though the documents were determined to be relevant to the investigation. Can you clarify what's going on here? Why are you backing off this request? We're not backing off of it, uh, but what we are doing is mindful of the fact that when a court does examine these issues uh, in the litigation that uh, former President Trump has initiated, that it will look to see whether the Congress tried to accommodate uh, any of the uh, issues that were raised. That's part of uh, demonstrating the good faith of our committee. Um, but uh, we're very determined to get answers. Uh, I think the Biden administration has also made it very clear that they're not asserting executive privilege uh, over any of these documents uh, in the tranches that have been requested so far. Uh, and it's the predominant uh, view legally that uh, the current president really has to say here uh, and so we feel on very solid ground. I think Donald Trump understands he's going to lose this litigation. But his whole point, as it was for four years, is merely to delay, to try to keep information about his misconduct secret from the public as long as he can. Uh, and we're moving with great expedition uh, and we'll continue to do so. I talked to a former federal prosecutor who says the fact that Trump is fighting for specific documents not to be released would suggest there's something he's worried about in them. Do you think that's the case or is it just part of a, a broader strategy to stonewall at every turn? Oh, I think uh, Donald Trump is very concerned about what we're going to learn and what we've been learning in terms of his own misconduct, his own role in inciting that insurrection. Uh, but there's so much more we don't know. Uh, and we want to understand, you know, what was the president's uh, role in understanding before the insurrection? What did he know about the propensity for violence, the participation of white nationalist groups? What was his role, uh, if any, in the decision to either send or delay sending reinforcements to the Capitol when it was under attack? What were his advisors urging him to do? What did he, in fact, do? Uh, we have a lot of unanswered questions about the president's role in all of this. Uh, and we're determined to get answers. And it, it certainly appears that Donald Trump is equally determined to stop us uh, because I think he fears the public learning uh, the extent of, of his role and the extent of his misconduct. My understanding is Jeffrey Clark, a, a former DOJ lawyer who reportedly was willing to support Trump's big lie about the election, 
is scheduled for a deposition on Friday. Has he given you any indication on whether he plans to show up? Uh, I can't comment specifically. We do expect uh, in the near future to talk to uh, Mr. Clark, uh, and he has very relevant information. Uh, and uh, the public uh, reports indicate that he was trying to use the Justice Department uh, as a, a vehicle to, uh, uh, to get Georgia not to certify electors or to delay their certification or to send to others that he had a strategy for other states as well, uh, that he was willing to use the Justice Department to advocate uh, claims that didn't exist about uh, massive fraud. Um, those are the public allegations that we want to talk with him about. Uh, he did not, as I understand it, testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee, so um, it will be very important for our committee to hear from him. Uh, my expectation is that will happen very soon. Even though there are two Republican lawmakers on your committee, GOP leaders have tried to frame your investigation as purely partisan. Some have taken it a step further. Here's Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. January 6th was just a riot at the Capitol. And if you think about what our Declaration of Independence says, it says to overthrow tyrants. So there's a clear difference between January 6th and the Marxist communist revolution that Antifa BLM Democrat ground troops waged on the American people in 2020. Again, this is a sitting member of Congress. She's not just suggesting the January 6th Capitol attack has been overblown. She appears to be justifying it and trying to use the Declaration of Independence as her defense. What's your response? Well, look, she says what she does to get attention. Uh, she's uh, probably the least constructive member of Congress, uh, to put it uh, politely. I, I think it's just nuts what she's saying. Um, but, uh, but look, the, the GOP leadership is not that far from where she is. Um, you know, Kevin McCarthy's complaints about the fact we only have two Republicans uh, on our select committee uh, is the result of Kevin McCarthy, uh, who vetoed a commission that would have been equally divided between appointees of the parties. He didn't want that. And then when we move forward with a select committee, he doesn't want that either. And the answer is clear. Why? He's doing Donald Trump's bidding. The GOP doesn't want us to get to the truth any more than Donald Trump does. Uh, and, and look, uh, there are public reports now of Republican members who may have been involved uh, in January 6th. We're going to get to the bottom of those allegations, too. Uh, and it's no surprise that the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Kevin McCarthy's uh, and the other QAnon supporters uh, out there uh, don't want us to do that. But we're going to press, press ahead. Quickly, Congressman, because I have about 30 seconds left in the show here. Uh, Obviously, you're waiting on the DOJ to decide whether or not it will prosecute Steve Bannon for criminal contempt. Are you surprised they haven't made a decision yet? Uh, no. I mean, look, they just got the referral from us uh, a matter of days ago. But we do expect them to act with, with expedition. Uh, it's important to reestablish the rule of law, that no one's above the law, that they're not going to treat uh, you or me or any of my constituents differently uh, than they would Steve Bannon, a friend of the former president. Um, and. At the end of the day, I think this is an early test of whether our democracy is recovering and whether everyone is equally subject to the law. Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you so much for your time.